Hello and welcome back. This is probably about video number three or four in the series. I have actually done several that I'm going to hope to edit and splice together. Some in fast motion to speed things up a bit. So where I left off from last time was the pages were blank and I had just paper clipped on the different laces and trims that I was planning on making into pockets and page edges and so forth. So what I have now done is glued them in and those were the videos that I have already recorded. And now I'm gonna show you what the journals look like with all of the edges and the pockets sewn in and the embellished trims glued in place. So it's technically still a blank journal inside, um, not embellished, but it's certainly, you could even use it as is if you like. And when it's at this stage, it looks like it's done. But now comes the fun part of decorating each page individually and making the tags. So I'm thinking the next video will be making journaling cards and tags. But first, I want to show you the progress we've made. So this is the one journal. And from the side, this is what it would look like with the um, lace extending over the page edges. And I might still add in, if you can see right here, another um, trim, probably on this page just because it's kind of taken a, a jump right here and I want something that's gonna come about that high on the page edge. But as is, it looks totally fine and in a journal it would sit very pretty. And then this is the second one, second signature. So let's start with going through the first signature and we've got the cover. If you look closely, you can see the pink stitching And I've sewed the uh, pocket, vintage lace pocket in place. And a handkerchief, vintage handkerchief on this side. Beautiful, absolutely gloriously beautiful sequined trim. These are from Sheila Gingrich at Boho Daydreams. They are just glued on. I don't sew them on because I don't want to uh, compromise the integrity of the design in the lace or my sewing machine. Here is just some beautiful pink vintage lace sewn on the outside and then I've used the tickets as a side tuck here. Then I've got um, throughout all of the journals I've got a set of pockets in each signature. So there are eight all together and I did them all the same. I just ink the edges and then um, put a little piece of the rosette trim at the bottom of each pocket. This page I absolutely love. I absolutely love this gorgeous um, vintage eyelet lace, which I bought like this. And then I've threaded th it through with some beautiful gorgeous silk and it's it's like a peach color sandy peach color but it coordinates with this uh, vintage music paper so lovely I, I love it and I attached it so it extends over the edge you can see it from both sides and this becomes a side tuck and the tracing paper and then another vintage lace pocket which I've added some vintage lace trim here just to give it a firm support here and cover up the raw edge of the lace. Cute little smaller page and look at that trim. Oh yeah, yeah that's so beautiful. I think it looks more like rose gold, more like a peachy pink, which is fine. It goes with this um, collection so beautifully. And then I stitched this lovely ruffled tulle lace trim here. This I got at Renee Bouquet's if anyone's interested. You can also get it in purple and white I believe. An unadorned page. 
another small page. And what I did with this one was I um, just glued this trim right across. And I did it in one piece, even though it makes it a little bulky in the crease here, just because the pattern was so perfect and it fell right into the center at a nice spot. So what I will have to do when I am uh, sewing in the signatures is be very careful that I don't pierce a hole right into that lace. And the way it sits, it should be just between holes, so that should work out quite nicely. But while I do have this page open, I'm going to glue this little tuck spot shut. And I just do a bead of glue on each side and a squiggle down the middle. And I don't do that until I'm finished in case I want to sew the trim on. And that's it for that little page. Makes a great tuck spot, holds the um, tag or the card in place. And then we've got this page here with another vintage lace pocket. I really do like the contrast of the pink stitching. Whenever I'm uh, gluing on two pockets, as in this spread here, I always make sure there's a good enough gap for the rest of the signature to sit directly in the middle and not get caught up in the stitching of the uh, signature into the spine. And then this one has a paper tuck here and this modern lace, just a gorgeous color. This is the vintage velvet that I have and I attach some lace to it and then stitched it in place. And that is um, more like a belly band. But because it, it's quite solid, it will hold anything in place without it falling through. I'm not worried about that. You can always clip it with a paper clip up, up the top too. The other side of that beautiful pink trim. And I'm probably not gonna ink these edges. I might though, but I love the way that it blends right into this side here. I uh, sewed a um, sari silk ruffle here on this side. And this is just modern lace. Look at this beautiful cascading effect here. This is something that I, I try to do as I'm planning out the placement for each piece of lace, is that they're gonna stagger and look so pretty together. So I think this, I don't know if it's even a piece of lingerie lace, but it's vintage and it's beautiful. Very sheer and I left it extending over the edges because I like that look. Makes it look just a little rough. Some pretty pink lace edge here. What I do is I try to sew them pretty much the same distance from the edge of the page after I've glued them in. You know, done a, just a bead, light bead of glue so that they won't just flop all over the place. And then it looks pretty from both sides. As you can see, some more music paper here, and I've got this extremely sheer um, chiffon, I believe that is. I wasn't going to stitch it at all, but I thought, you know, just in case it gets pulled or caught on something, I do want the stability of it having been sewn to the page, and it doesn't distract away from the sheer fabric at all. I think it's lovely. Here we've got a belly band where I glued the um, lace trim, this is vintage lace, to the paper pocket and then just stitched it in place. This is um, an uh, unadorned page here so I could do all kinds of things with it if I choose to in the future. I don't leave too many blank spots because I, I just really like uh, the fullness of each page having something on it but it's certainly not a hard and fast rule. And again, this is a nice little tuck spot up here that will hold any tag or journaling card in place. Just a beautiful vintage lace uh, trim in a uh, really pale ballet pink color. I don't know if I'm gonna glue that down or not. Probably, probably not. You can always clip something to the top or the bottom. And then this has got to be lingerie lace as well from a slip or I don't know what it was, but it was—it looked like the hem of a garment that it was cut from originally. 
I love the sheer effect with a, a tag or card behind it. It just looks so feminine and beautiful. And then vintage, actually that's not vintage lace, that's modern lace. Just a nice deep pocket. And that's the end of the first signature. On to the second. So here we've got this lovely placemat doily piece. And I've sewn it on the three sides. And it makes a beautiful tuck spot off to the side. And this one has a blush colored vintage hanky, which I've sewn in. And then I attached just this lace over top. I didn't want to stitch this because I think it kind of stretches out the shape and doesn't always look as pretty. And here I've got just some trim at the top. This one I did glue in place already. And I left a bit of a gap for the fold in the page. A paper pocket just glued in here. And in an applique that I've just glued the top piece on. I, I don't sew those on either because I think it distracts from the applique. Some vintage lace. I love this rose blush nude colored lace it's just one of my favorite and on this side we've got a tuck spot with the um, tea dyed eyelet cotton lace and tool that i um got here and um, on the other side i could run a piece of this still might do that i haven't decided it just feels like it needs a little bit more support on it. So that's kind of what my intentions are there. And then here I am going to punch uh, the um, holes so that I can thread some lace or seam binding through there. Here we've got another vintage lace pocket, which the bow on there coordinates with the bow applique on the other page. And then this small page has some beautiful embellished trim from Boho Daydreams from Sheila. Just matches this page absolutely perfectly. The roses and the gold and the cream, the, the um, just beautiful, absolutely beautiful, perfect. And uh, this one was a little trickier to sew in place because this is kind of bulky, this piece here, but. Um, it needed to be sewed because it is a little heavier and I always feel gives it more stability than if you just glue it in place. Another blush colored pocket on the pink shimmerous paper. I love that monochromatic look. And then another little half or a small page that I've just done some vintage lace trim. This one I did glue in place and it's very, very sheer so it'll, it will sit fine no matter where I leave it when sewing in the signature. Center of the signature has this amazing pocket, which I'm really, really pleased with the way they turned out. So you can put a tag, let's put this one behind and it will uh, show at the bottom. This is my prototype. I just keep it handy for the length and the width. Uh, so it's actually a double, double doily pocket is what I'm gonna call it. Super cute. And then I'm thinking I'll put some kind of a, either a ribbon or a bow or pin or something pretty up there. And this beautiful vintage lace on this side. And you could do a slight tuck here, but it's not meant to be a tuck. It's just, I like the way the lace sits there. The other side of this very sheer lace. paper tuck spot and then this beautiful lace trim is also from a Renee Bouquets. I think, uh, what is it, Tiffany Lane? SM Tiffany Lane or something like that. Um, she sells this one too. I've got it from both of those vendors. This is this old piece of lace. I just love it. I just think it's so beaten up and stunning. Just, just love it. That one I haven't decided if I'm going to 
glue shut or not. Another paper pocket with a rosette trim. No stitching on that page. You, you don't have to stitch or sew them in place, but I prefer it. Like I've said, I like the texture of sewing and it, it gives me the confidence knowing that it's not gonna get pulled apart as easily. And these are the envelope tuck spots. I'm still not 100% sure if I'm gonna glue them down or not. And beautiful, absolutely gorgeous, vintage uh, eyelid cotton trim sewn there. And then this very delicate, fragile looking vintage lace trim that I've made into a belly band type pocket. So if I do put something in here, it'll probably be a card, a journaling card or a tag that has fabric on it because I find fabric to fabric just holds each other in place better. And then I would probably secure it with a paper clip either up at the top or on the side edge. Another plain page, paper pocket, and a tuck spot here with some of the digital images from the kit. Another vintage lace pocket that I've added some vintage trim to the top and bottom to um, keep the edges from catching on things. And then a belly band, some beautiful vintage lace, ivory colored vintage lace. And that's it. There's not much difference in the two journals. Um, like I I've said, the pages may be slightly different. Um, the one page that I did do this additional trim, I like this effect. So I placed this lace just far enough away from this page so it won't catch on it, but enough to give just a lovely staggered effect. And yes, this beautiful trim here again. So gorgeous. And what else about this one? Oh, I know what I was going to say. Hindsight, what I should have done was cut this page a little bit narrower because I would have liked to have had this lace staggered. I didn't really notice that until afterwards, and I'm not going to take it off and redo it. Um, I certainly had the room to do that here with the image. So nobody's perfect. That's fine, and it's just fine the way it is. Oh yes, this one has this gorgeous trim here. Sparkly sequin another one of Sheila's trims from Boho Daydreams. It is a lot flatter, so I did it all the way across. It will catch in the fold quite nicely. Here is just the reverse image of the center of this signature with the um, double doily pocket. <laughs> Very cool. So that would be one. Two tags. There you go. How's that? Trying to look for something that I've done differently than the other signature. They're pretty much the same. This one will have the lace running through it probably the next time you see it. This one I've glued down. I love this lace together. This is beautiful. And I did make one other mistake. I was sewing along. It was late in the evening and I thought, wow, that's Sure, almost going into the in front cover image. I, I can't remember doing that. And then I looked at it and I sewed it in uh, upside down. So this one I did pick out, picked all the stitches out and then re-sewed it down this side, but it's left these marks. Unfortunately, I mean, I didn't need to point that out to you, but that happens. It's the first time it's happened to me. And I know I saw somebody that had a, a tool that they used to just kind of try and get those uh, holes to, to lay a little bit smoother. And if anybody thinks of who the lady was, drop me a comment below and let me know because I should have paid more attention when I was watching her, sharing her, her trick. This, absolutely beautiful, love it. So yeah, I'm just blitzing through here to see if I've done, oh yes, this one here. This, I did not run the, the trim all the way across because it's got pearls, a uh, little diamondette, 
and sequins on here, so it would have been way too thick to leave it in the crease. But as I was just trying it out to see how that would work to either run it um, horizontally or vertically, this was by far the winner. And I wanted to see how it would hold a journaling card. So either, either one of these looks very pretty, but it does have a rose gold hue to it, which I love. And I'm just gonna leave this journaling card in here now because that's what um, I'm gonna stick with. I love it, love that effect. Another blank page and this trim. Now this trim I did cut because I wanted a space, a gap between the, um, the fold for when I sew it into the signature. I'm just gonna add this glue because I've decided I'm not gonna do anything else. I'm not gonna sew it on because it's got a lot of sequins. Uh, that would not work too well. Yeah, I thought this trim picked up the, the rose colors in here so beautifully with the gold. Just meant to be. Some things are like that. Vintage lace pocket. This uh, page is blank. It's just uh, pink and then I tea dyed it. But I certainly have some beautiful die cuts and such that I can embellish with on this one. Slightly different trim on this velvet pocket. Some more sari trim. Yeah. And this beautiful uh, peach colored silk uh, ribbon right through the eyelet cotton, the vintage eyelet cotton. Love it. And again, this, uh, I'm going to call it lingerie trim because I think it is vintage lace. Oh, it's just so beautiful and sheer, so feminine. So yeah, this cover will be, this will be the journal that I keep. And this one would be the one that I would consider selling. So that's where we're at now. And I am going to do some punching. And I thought maybe we could do that together. I've got this beautiful um, Martha Stewart lace edge punch. And I can't remember if it's in the first signature or the second one. There's going to be at least one in each journal. I just have to find the page. And it must be in the second signature. Where are you hiding? There we go. Okay, so to do this, I take this width here and then when I'm putting it in my punch I start so that it's got exactly the same distance I want to hit this right in the middle so that when I end up here it's going to be the same distance on either side and that's about an inch a little bit more than an inch other way to find the center is with these awesome Tim Holtz rulers and we are at so that is my center mark right there i can erase this after so that should fall in the center of this right here and then quite often because these are so thin i have some scrap paper that i put in between um, if you've got this punch yourself and you've used it for this kind of thing, you know that it can sometimes <laughs> not rip your paper up, but just not quite punch the hole consistently. So there's my first punch. Perfect. And then you just line it up with the next one. And I'll put that in there as well. And now 
now if I do one more, where's that gonna fall? It's gonna be too close to the edge, so I'm gonna leave it. I'm just gonna leave it at that distance right there. Alrighty. This might look fiddly to you, but it has saved me. From, see, there you go. That one was not quite, not quite covering the hole. And then you just snip these off. It might be my punch, but I think it's because the paper is thin. And it's ready to be laced. So that will go back in this one. And you know what? I'm going to do this side too. I definitely will do this side too. So this is a perfectionist part of me that has to measure. And we'll just use the same method here. with these little slots. There we go. And now this side. I got a, a different um, slot punch, I think they are. I like for uh, punching badges and such. So it's, it's a much bigger shape here and you can use wider ribbon, but you can't go along something. It would have to be at one end, either end. And I really would like to be able to use that in this journal too. So we'll see how it goes. And then I will thread. Yeah, that looked really beautiful. Right? I think so. And then I've got this, which can still sit over top of the lace. So that is signature number two from this journal. And I'm going to do the same with the other one here. This one, though, I will not be able to punch on this side. Ah, because I've already got this in here. Or should I? I don't know. I have to figure that out. Okay, now I need to measure again. This one's a little smaller. We've got... Our center is right here. Biggie. All right, 
moving along here now. I'm sure you all know how to punch paper, but this is what I needed to do, so might as well do it on camera. And that one I will leave at that too. So if I end up punching this other side, it's going to come in about a quarter of an inch. So it means I will lose part of my tuck here. And do I care? Hmm. Mm. It is going to look like this. And then the lace will sit about there. Hang on, right there. So that would be rather pretty. Uh, still not 100% committed to doing it. So I think we'll just wrap it up for now. And then I think the next time you see this project, I'm going to start on the tags. And what I have to, to do is, um, I think I showed you already before, I want to cover them. Maybe I didn't. I've got a bunch of lace. This is just modern lace here, this piece, but these over top of uh, some colored paper looks really, really pretty. And then I've got this vintage curtain piece. And then all of these um, embellished sari pieces. So these will all become tags. And what I will work on is um, cutting them to shape and gluing them, pre-cutting the, the tag sizes that I want. And then that's when I will start recording is how I attach the fabric to each tag before I stitch them around and then either collage some images or pictures or what, whatever I've got that I showed you already in the first video during our discussion. And that's my plan. So thanks for tuning in again. And I hope you're all having a great day. We'll talk to you again soon. Bye.